Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel The Teaching Show. Please subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon for more updates. Uh, don't forget to like this video. So, uh, in continuation with our uh, discussions on process calculations, um, we will start with the subject content. Uh, so, till now, what we had seen was uh, how to write a general balance equation. Uh, without reaction or with reaction it can be a steady state process or an unsteady state process it can, and we had also seen previous in previous videos that uh, processes can be of three types they can be continuous batch or semi batch so uh, the focus of this video is uh, writing material balance equation for continuous steady state processes without reaction okay so there are various uh, examples of such processes like absorption, distillation, drying, filtration, extraction. Okay, so there are so many uh, processes which come under this. So let's start first with the general balance equation. So what we had seen in earlier video was that the general balance equation takes the form input of material through the system boundary plus generation that is produced by any reaction minus output that is the the outgoing stream and then consumption that is consumed due to the reaction if you uh, add these things uh, taking care of the proper sign convention that comes out to be equal to the accumulation term that is the build up within the system okay so input plus generation minus output minus consumption that is equal to accumulation since this is a steady state process so accumulation will be equal to zero no reaction is taking place so there is no material being generated or consumed in a chemical reaction so generation and consumption terms will also be zero so then your uh, general balance equation will take the form of only input minus output that is equal to accumulation okay so let's apply now this balance equation as it is written for some simple systems okay so let's start with a distillation column now uh, your problem at hand is that a feed of 1000 kg per hour is uh, being fed to a distillation column. The feed contains benzene and toluene in equal quantities. So, Xp and Xt that is giving you the mass fraction of benzene and toluene. So, easily you can figure it out that 500 kg of benzene is going in and 500 kg of toluene is going in. Now, after distillation, what's happening from the bottom, your uh, benzene rich, uh, toluene rich phase is coming out because toluene is heavier than benzene. So, toluene is coming as the bottom product and benzene is coming as the distillate. Now, both of these distillate and bottom uh, streams, they also contain some amount of toluene and benzene respectively. Now, you have been asked to calculate what is the amount of toluene in the distillate and what is the amount of benzene in the bottom product, okay? So, how do we do these calculations? First of all, you should always remember that whatever be the uh, question which is given to you, first of all, organize the information in the form of a fully labeled flowchart. So, let's see what I have done over here. I have made a flowchart. This is my process unit, that is the distillation column. The feed is going in, so incoming stream, outgoing streams. So this much uh, you should be able to draw. So this is your, first of all, your flowchart. Then fully label it, okay. So identify all the process streams. So that's what I have done. I have identified all the process streams, that is the incoming stream, outgoing streams. Okay, then your third step is figure out unknown variables and also figure out what are the known uh, variables like known flow rates and compositions. So that's what I've done. Uh, I know this flow rate, I know these composition, these things have been given. So whatever is known, I have written it down. Whatever unknown, I just give it a symbol. So I have to calculate the toluene flow rate which is coming out along with distillate. So I have given it a symbol M dot T1. Similarly, M dot B2 represents the amount of benzene in the bottom product okay so whatever the unknowns you just assign a variable to it so that that is your third step figure out the unknown variables and write as algebraic symbols 
then you have to do is write down independent balance equations now let's just elaborate on this how many equations you can write balance equations one is you can write a benzene balance then you can write a terlene balance you can also write a overall material balance that is the amount of feed which is the amount of material going in that is equal to amount of material which is coming out okay but just think about it how many equations are independent in these in these three equations if you add the benzene balance and your Charlie balance what you guessed is the overall balance overall material balance okay so as a thumb rule just remember one thing that just count how many uh, components you have that many independent material balance equations you can write so you have two components here benzene and terlene so you can write two independent balance equations because um, overall balance will be some of these two so it is your choice depending on the problem uh, how easy or difficult it is to solve you have to just think, see the problem look at it and decide what type of balance equations you want to use you, whether you want to write both the component balance equations or you want to write one component and uh, or for that matter i should say n minus one component balances and one overall balance okay so in this problem what i'm going to do is uh, i will write benzene balance and terlene balance so if i write benzene balance input is 0.5 into 1000 that is 500 kg that is equal to 450 plus m dot b2 so benzene which is going in 500 kg coming out is 450 plus m dot b2 similarly i can write terlene balance and these equations i can quickly solve and find out what is the value of benzene in the distillate oh uh, sorry what is the amount of benzene in the bottom product and the amount of terlene in the distillate so this is a very simple problem let's go ahead and see another problem this is about the evaporation chamber the problem statement is uh, like this uh, you are trying to uh, supply humidified air which is rich in oxygen to some bioreactor okay now in order to produce this humidified air I am using a evaporation chamber in which three streams are going in. Okay, so one is liquid water, another is air, and the third is pure oxygen stream. And it is given that this uh, the molar flow rate of this pure oxygen stream is one fifth of the molar flow rate of air stream. Okay, now desired output uh, is one point five mole percent of water in the outgoing stream. So what we will do first? Okay, draw a fully labeled flow chart uh, with all the known and unknown streams. So let's do that. I have made this box which represents my unit that is my evaporation chamber. Then first stream I am marking that is um, just water, liquid water. Second stream is air which is going in and third stream is oxygen. Okay, and then I am labeling them. See, I know the volumetric flow rate of um, water which is going in, but I don't know the molar flow rate. Okay, uh, just observe this problem first because uh, in first problem we are dealing with mass fractions. Now everything is given in moles, right? So we will have to choose mole fractions, okay, or molar flow rates. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just marking everywhere molar flow rates which are unknown. So one unknown is N1 dot that is the molar flow rate of water which is coming in. Then N2 dot is the molar flow rate of air. And uh, since it is given that the molar flow rate of oxygen is one fifth of that of the stream B. So I'm just writing 0.2 N2 dot. So I have identified three incoming streams. Now I will identify what is the outgoing stream. Let's label it as or denote it as N3 dot. So, uh, further what is given? It is given that uh, the water which is, uh, okay, the outlet stream or the outgoing stream, it contains 1.5% of H2. Okay, what is 1.5% of H2? If I convert it to mole fraction, I have to divide it by 100. So, that means the mole fraction of water in the outgoing stream is 0 0.015. That is 1.5 divided by 100. Okay, now it has been asked to find out what is the mole fraction of oxygen in the outgoing stream. So, we don't know it. Let's denote it by Y. Since all, some of all mole fractions should be equal to 1. So, I am going to write uh, the mole fraction of nitrogen that is the third component which is there as 
1 minus 0 0.015 minus 5. Okay, so now what I have done, I have first of all made a flow chart, then I have labeled it. Okay, and I have indicated what all variables I know and whatever the unknown variables which are there, are unknown flow rates, unknown compositions, I have just labeled it as a variable, uh, either C N2 dot, N3 dot, N1 dot or as a mole fraction Y. So, my first step is done. Now, what is the next step? I have to now write down balance equations. Okay, so let's see how many components are there. There are three components, oxygen, nitrogen and water. Okay, so I can write three independent equations. Fine. Uh, how many unknowns are there? N1 dot, N2 dot, N3 dot and mole fraction y. So there are four unknowns. So I need one more equation. Let's see from where we will get this equation. First of all, when we are so when we start solving this problem, let's see. Okay, one of the flow rates is given that is 20 centimeter cube of water per minute. Let's assume that the density of water at whatever the conditions at which we are operating, let's say that it is one gram per centimeter cube. Okay, so I can convert this volumetric flow rate into molar flow rate directly. So let's start from this point. So I will start from stream A, my calculations. I will convert the volumetric flow rate into molar flow rate. So multiply it with your density and then I get grams per minute. Then I just divide it with the molecular weight and I get my molar flow rate which comes out to be 1.11 moles of H2O per minute. Now at this stage we have three unknowns N2 dot, N3 dot and Y see n2 dot n3 dot and y now i have three equations i can solve it quickly okay so let's see in which sequence i'm going to solve it so let's start the balancing or writing down the balance equations which has the least number of unknowns so i will start with water balance see water balance why i'm starting with water balance because water is coming only in this stream a and this outlet stream okay this stream is fully known in this stream, uh, I know the mole fraction of water, I just don't know N3 dot. So, if I just write water balance, I should be able to quickly calculate my N3 dot. That is what I am doing. So, I have written water balance, N1 dot is equal to 0.015 N3 dot. And I have calculated my, uh, the amount of uh, outlet stream, okay, the molar flow rate of the outlet stream. Next, I have now two choices. I can write either two component balances or I can write one total balance and one component balance. So, I will suggest you to write on these three balance equations, the remaining two component balances and one total balance. And what you will see is that if I am going to use two component balances, I need to solve two simultaneous equations that are in N1 dot and Y. You write it down and confirm. Okay. So, uh, instead of solving two simultaneous equations, uh, what I will do is, I will write one total balance and one component balance, okay. So, it will be easier to use because I can sequentially solve the uh, equations and find out the unknown variables. So, let's write down the total balance equation first. So, to total balance equation is um, 0.2 N2 plus N2 dot plus N1 dot that is equal to N3 dot. I know N1 dot and N3 dot, the only unknown is N2 dot, so I can calculate it easily. So, uh, see over here, I have calculated now N2 dot. Now, uh, what is left is just the mole fraction of oxygen in the outgoing stream. So, I will write down oxygen balance. It's again simple. N2 dot I know. Okay. And the only unknown is Y now. So, I just rearrange this equation and calculate uh, what is the uh, mole fraction of oxygen in the outlet stream. Okay, so I hope that you understand these two problems and uh, you get an idea how do you apply a uh, general balance equation uh, when it is applied to continuous steady state processes without chemical reactions. I hope you liked this video and uh, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to like it. Um, thanks for watching.